Hello and welcome back to Tyranny. So today we start with going to Desert March, dealing with Bronze Brotherhood, then meeting with Brazen Mark. Also, I forgot his name. Um, Blade and Mark. Oh well. And okay, here we are looking for the missing shipment. Yeah. Um. Look for the weapons there, just look for them. Okay, so maybe they will be somewhere here. Yep. You there. Though I was dead, did you? Though for to you help, just help yourself to these crates. What's on my way to get these to Forge Pound? Seems that won't be happening now. What happened to you? Was crossing through Desert Smart. I stopped for just a moment and it happened. Blade right in my back. I didn't even see who or what has done it. Looks like I won't be finishing my duty here. Listen, this shipment. It's property of the Forge Bound. Do the world a bit of service and take it to them instead of pocketing it. These are dark times. Leafy and Crossing needs the support. We will take this to them. Yes. He grips the side of the broken cart, lifting himself up so that his face is level with yours. Good. Be swift about it. You must... You must... He coughs, spitting thick clumps of blood onto the ground. Damn. <laughs> Never thought this was how I, would go, how I would go out. He loses hold of the cart and falls back against it. Hitting the ground hard, the old man gasps, the sound from his throat torturous and wet. After a few moments, he is silent. So back to the Lithian crossing we go. Can we make him move faster somehow? Oh, by the way, do we have anything? Oh, we have lots of items to collect. Do we have the library? Training ground library, yep. So we'll go to the spire, we'll collect all the items that collected. Then we'll go meet with Blade and Mark. I swear, we will meet with him. But since we can deal with those things now, I think we should. Especially since we have some items for the library. Maybe we can do something with the Scaland Archive as well. Human demands too much! Yeah, I demand you to enter the building. I yes, I agree that it's too much of you. You have returned! Lahar turns to face you, her body covered head to toe in charred hues, chest rising and falling under the strain of labored breathing. There's always more demand for iron than there is time in the day. I found the missing shipment for you. Thank you for finding our missing weapons! A sigh of relief escapes her. <laughs> we almost had to leave the fort idle for the day on account of material sword shortages. And we've no desire to find out what will happen if we don't meet our quota. Add losing those weapons on top of that, and oh, who knows that what would be subject to too. <laughs> we have to get everything repaired and back in the right hands. She attempts a good natured laugh, but it's a false laugh. So there is that. I don't remember if the entry into Sunset Spire over here will bring us right into the Sunset Spire. I think it will. Hopefully it will. If not, then we'll have to go all the way down here, go for the map and then to the top of the spire. So 
right here. Those keystones look so cool on the minimap, just little specks of color colorful light. I like it. Here is the library. Great. Uh, what's the status of your research? I'm happy to say I've made great progress. He beams at you and exhales a welcome breath. Allow me to show you my findings. Nice. The sages of the library combed through ancient scrolls. Okay, it's a Deathbringer. Hmm. Ancient weapon. Can you please give me something that's an armor? Wait, I thought I could give you something here. Um, I want you to research something. Oh, I like this. Shield, sigil, sigil. Huh. Time long. Sell an archive, yeah. Okay. Um, mountain spire, please. Yep. This one is for what exactly? If you consider it, it will appear to begin the same trance that showed you glimpses of the previous spire. Once more you touch the sculpture and once more your mind is flooded with sensation. This time your sense is leaving your body and floating up, higher even than the mountain spire, until all of the artists is beneath your feet. From high above you see the mystic currents moving about the artists, billowing clouds of every color that churn about the realms. Even from this far away vantage point, the cyclones and currents of magic fill you with threat and foreboding. Send your senses toward the mystic currents. As you near the mystic currents, you hear inquate voices, commands, proclamations, the stuff of edicts. All across Teratus, the edicts of Kairos, some centuries old, still live on, their arcane signatures bright as the midday sun seemingly stronger than the day they were proclaimed. As your senses float away from the arcane turbulence, you are struck by the fact that the land, untouched by edicts, appear to be in the minority. Even the lands long ago conquered by Kairos are still haunted by edicts, whether because they still linger from the olden days of conquest, or if they were cast more recently to suppress rebellion, your senses cannot glean. Huh. Oh, that you can see we have four spires unlocked. How about the rest? Can we train something? Uh, for you, Dodge. Sure. For me, it would be two handed weapons. I'll give you some Dodge as well. Oh my goodness, you have a lot. I cannot train. Have you made something lately? A lot of stuff. Oh, god damn it. Scroll. Just a scroll. Okay, show me what you have for sale. Fate Bender's shield. Just have a. Um, this. Oh. Oh, so we have yep, our stuff is better. Yeah. Okay, thank you, nonetheless. Lantry. Uh, oh, one moment, my friend. Just let me finish this thought. Ending his note with a flourish, Lantry licks the tip of the quill, pausing to taste it a second and third time before tucking the pen in a holster on his sleeve. Well, apparently, we don't need anything to speak to you about. Mm -hmm. We do wield parry now. 
wish to hear any new tidings. Did you hear any of tidings of particular interest lately? Countless. Of which would the master made by not like to know? How did you end up in Tunun's court? Word spread of our stand at Buster City like wildfire through the tears. For the first time, my name inspired awe and loathing in the hearts of men. <laughs> Tycoon wraps a finger of his blade scarred lips, smiling fondly at the memory. After I spent a time training Fifth Eyes men in the ways of and means of my trade, but my hunger for rings has always held more sway than my fondness for bloodshed. <laughs> So I carved a place for myself in the court. As I'm sure you will understand, my friend, there is value in those who can distinguish between the right and wrong ears in which to whisper, and there are many to that, li that listen to my murmurs. Why do they call you the swindler? An unfortunate misnomer, my friend. I am wholly and utterly innocent of whichever vile misdeed I am accused, I assure you. Thief comes to himself with clear amusement. Unless, of course, that vile misdeed might gain me a favor for any current powers that be. And, of course, there was that time I swindled an entire city of her freedom by sneaking a fate binder and her forces in from the sewers. I profited quite nicely from adventure. How was life before the war? Not nearly as interesting. Comfortable. Not clean. The swindler plucks a bronze dagger from a sheath on his thigh. He flicks the blade slowly back and forth, blade glinting in the low candlelight as he digs dirt from beneath his fingernails. I was bastard born and raised, never had so much as this dipped a toe out of the city before my mother died and my own promptly kicked me out of my kill. I ran a short stint in the streets, but it didn't suit me. Not having bed, so I traded a letter of recommendation from a fine nobleman with a betting problem. That cost me a week of playing sly of hand in the gambling hall. It gained me entry with the sages. I travelled and it widened my eyes. I saw the Vellum Citadel before it burned. But eventually the sages found my methods too distasteful and I was expelled. It didn't prevent me from forging my writ or graduation, of course. The swindler flashes you a twisted smile. I'm looking for a master merchant, someone with exquisite items. Then you wish to speak with Harshi and Browns in Lithian's Crossing. I can tell you he has access to the best supply routes in the tears, though he would deny it in his death toes. Hm. Thank you. Hmm. Not this one, I wanted to train. An uncle, but that would be great for you. Mm -mm -mm, Paridot and subterfuge. Do you want subterfuge? No, I don't think so. It won't suit you too much. We spoke with you, yeah. Fatebinder Evna, a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. I'm Fatebinder Sesper. I understand that you reach out to the court for a trainer. I have been provided. I've also brought wine. Wine? The Norch's finest, a large cart's worth of casks. Required a team of six beasts to hold it, and worth every damn iron ring if it saves me from the certain swill. Raises a flag on his lips. Tell me about yourself. I fear that story is far longer than either of us have time for. He chuckles mirthlessly. Suffice it to say that I have served as a member of Tunun's court longer than most other Fatebinders, and have earned something of a dotage as a result. Apparently that now involves assisting in the Kairos Forsaken Tears. He looks back toward the horizon. Though this, I admit freely, is the absolute rarest of views. <laughs> Excellent. Will I be working with you personally, or would you prefer a tutor I'm a member of your entourage? I'm feeling rusty. Let's work together. I look forward to it. I hope you understand that I will show you no favor. To tell us, much as war books no tenderness. Alright, here it says, oh god damn it, I forgot about this one. Eh. I'll be right back.
Okay, we're gonna remove that. Remember, do not speak with him at all. Okay, and we have two spires that to check. Um, or a spire? Come on. Yep. I love that it always takes you 15 minutes to go from one spire to, to another. You, I think. Have you completed forging an item for me? Your recruits have been hard at work. Let me show you what, the, what they've done. Alchemist gloves, alright. Um, I want you to forge something for me. Commander's plate, of course it will be. A heavy armor. The forge bound assembled Deathbringer using materials extracted from the burning library. This axe was inspired by a mighty weapon that lies shattered in the forge bound guild hall. The iron blade has no name, and even that of its creator was lost to time. The known facts about amount to the to stories of a fire that swept through the forges. The smith's conjured flames had whipped into an uncontrollable frenzy and made the area impossible for several days. Once the flames had cooled, the axe was found in the wreckage. A single crack rang down the blade, making the effort of and extraordinary results for naught. To this day, the axe is used as an example of art impermanence. Desiring an equally caustic blade with improved longevity, the forge bound sought to recreate Deathbringer. It is speculated that the obsidian shards dredged from the devastation of the burning library retained some echo of power from the Edict of Fire, which may be the secret to this axe powers. Not even the forge bound understood Karth's magic well enough to tell for certain. Mm. We don't have enough materials for this one. Yeah, we need Hound's Hide Mental. This is a dagger, we are not really using that. Hmm. Let's create the stuff. Or silk and gloves, maybe. Let's create the stuff for Siren. What do they do? Oh. Hmm. Can we do it with this one? We can upgrade Mage Bane Helm. And I finally managed to say it properly. Sure. Okay, the last spire we need to visit is here. Yes. Script? Yeah, we've got it, everything. Research. Forging. Here we have training grounds. Lore. I mean, we have right. We have a lot, lots of lore now, so I should be able to use this. That was the only thing I changed, basically. Oh, we haven't found little free. Mm. Let me see who's interesting here. Vers, perhaps. Do you have anything for me? I'll show you what we've got. Alright, they hate me now. Okay, let's see. Bows. Oh, unfortunately, I don't have anything that we can train. Okay, never mind. Let's meet with Blade and Mark now. Uh, it was at Ashwald. 
No longer blasted by the endless winds of the edicts of storms, the blade grave seems an endless expanse of twisted metal spines and rough hewn cliff sides. Like as you return to Stalwart, you hear no birds and glimpse no rodents. But today, you make out a billowing cloud of brightly shimmering movement. It's a few hundred feet away still, but moving down the ravine towards you. You look to your companions, deciding which to ask. Crouched with palms flat against the crit, kills and shadow sniffs in the air. <laughs> Our Bacchus ate trees and human walls of food. Wall swarms make song like wind in leaves. Her snout twitches slightly as the cloud grows closer. Bear back smells blood, we bear flesh. We should find heartstone shelter. The swarm slowly approaching, you search out one of the caves that riddles the sides of the ravine. Carved from the stone by Karos' incessant winds, the walls of the narrow fissure rise and fall like the waves of a frozen sea. You work your way carefully among the rocks as the baleful buzz crescendos. Through the gap behind you, you make out a turbid fog of shining carapaces. A few insects break from the swarm, alighting on the stone near you. Their wings bow symmetrical pearls and swirls, and their mandibles sharp enough to shear through wood, chitter in mesmerizing syncopation. After what feels like the better part of an hour, the last of the insects vanish, leaving you alone in the ravine, the song of the swarm still humming in your ears. And that granted us some focus that's just that which is great the shadows in the world stretch and stir silently shuddering like trees whipped in the wind as blade and mark emerges from their dark depths he circles you quietly, slowly, studying you like a strange specimen, eyes alight with amusement. He clearly takes note of the powerful aura you emanate. That aura looks good on you. The mage bane, I mean. Its iron smells of charred scourge. Hmm. Fascinating bit of work those forge-bound make. With it, you'll have little to fear in the old walls. Though, to be absolutely sure, I should probably test it for you. Here, I'll simply pop into the old walls, give it a quick run, and be back before you can say glory to Kairos. So hand it over, kid. Hmm. Why would you? Look, if you need to borrow it, you can just ask. Oh, alright. Can I, uh, borrow it? <laughs> the reason isn't anything you need to concern yourself about. Trust me. Okay. Really? I didn't expect you to be so trusting. His eyebrows rise with a pleased sort of astonishment, and before you can change your mind, he snatches the helm away. Then he's gone with a swish of shadows. Seconds drag in the minutes and minutes crawl into... With a flare of darkness, he stands suddenly before you. He still holds the helm in his hands, but his shock white hair is now damp and plastered to his head. Glowering ember eyes study you with a newfound respect. It works, more or less. Let us leave it at that and instead speak on more important matters. I'll admit, I'm surprised. After such great efforts building trust, you chose, or perhaps cannot help but follow, the solitary path. I've seen what you can do. You are no mere wild talent. You are something far more unusual and more dangerous. The other Archons will fear you. Envy you, hate you, in almost every manner. I believe they already hate me. It should come as no surprise that Graven Ash, Archon of War, views you as a nail in need of hammering. He's ordered the Disfavor to destroy you. They are on the march as we speak. Graven Ash would order an attack on lands held by the court. He considers you a fate binder of unbecoming character. An insult to Tunan's good name, and he knows it's very unlikely anyone will rally to your aid should he attack. Or at least, that's what I've overheard from the shadows. 
I think the disfavored will effortlessly stomp through your lands unless you hurry to stop them. When you have secured the mountain spire, we will discuss the next steps. I already have the mountain spire. Don't I? Heh. Well. Efna, word reached the court that you have dealt with the seditious mercenaries claiming for themselves the mantle of defenders of Livian's Crossing. You have the gratitude of both myself and the overlord. The disruptions in the settlement long stymied the production of iron goods for the war effort. Forge Master Zedania personally thanked me for your intervention. Congratulations! The Forge Bound Guild are a strong and tireless ally to possess. Tunun the Adjudicator. No. I'm a little bit confused. Wait. Okay, Vengeon Well, Mountain Spire. It's a little bit weird how I think we've made. Yep. I think I made it out of the order a little bit. Fade by Nervna, you've made new friends, I see. Nunoval gestures lazily toward the panorama of the valley below, at the siege camps dotting the perimeter of your citadel. I am here at Bladen's Mark behest. Should you fall, I will be in possession of the spire ahead of our enemies. And though I was not instructed to aid you, he didn't specifically forbid me from clearing, cleaving a few skulls, should I feel so inclined. He grins, both boisterous and eager. Had to pick a fight with the disfavor, did you? Well, you ought to be impressed with yourself. I assume Graven Ash was solely focused on destroying the Chorus. But it seems he's found time to try to kill you too. Hm. Should I survive this, we will need to... The massive sculpture rumbles, shaking the masonry of the spire and sending him off balance. The orb in the center of the resonator spins with the push of some unseen force, where the structure was extruded warmth. Now it gives off a ferocious heat that singes your face the longer you stare into it. A sound like music swarms in the air around the structure, but it's painful and disharmonious to your ears. Well, this is shit! <laughs> Siren has to shout over the disharmonious music. You would think Aspire would know some better songs, but I guess there's no accounting for taste. She refocuses on you with a mixed expressions. Do you realize that the energies of this place are all centered on you? I don't know what makes you so special. The spire is now fully awake. Its long dormant currents of energy dance to your presence. What was that? The fate binder of war crouches low, steadying himself against the vertigo of a too long glance over the edge. An assault against the spire's foundation. Earthshaker magic, perchance? No, it couldn't be. The spire often communicates in visions. Perhaps it, this is its way of saying it has something to discuss. I have heard Rogals prattle on a great deal about this spire that thrusts as a blade into the sky and as well to your mastery of its magic. Before the enemy comes to claim what is ours, I suggest you explore whatever link you have to this tower. Let us hope to Kairos there's some war that can be enacted, he shrugs. Else we will have no defense but to throw loose stones from Spire Sledge. When I broke the Edict of Fire, I was flooded by the, an intuition of how it all works. 
I could try proclaiming it without words. I believe you're the only fate painter living to have proclaimed an edict of Kairos twice. He leans in, his expression turning sour, and I worry it's gone to your head, my friend. Only Kairos can work the magic of an edict. Of course, none of them relaxes, letting out a heavy sigh. You have nothing to lose but your breath, and if our overload is watching, perhaps your proclamation will be answered. I don't want to. <laughs> the mystic hum of the spire pulses to the cadence of your heart. The ancient structure awaits your command. As you touch the stone structure, your sense of the move movement slows, and you feel the entirety of the tight tears at your fingertips. The spire stands ready to channel your will. Ooh, we can proclaim the edict. Exhausting desert like heat withers the region and dries up all natural resources of water. All characters have their magic skill increased. The Fate Binds party also heals a portion of frost damage received and consumables are far more effective. Foes become fatigued and have a penalty to quickness. The Edict of uh, Storms. The torrential rain plaguing the land, increasing the power of shock spells and lowers the effectiveness of fire spells. The Edict of Storms will generate a massive storm that covers huge area of the world. The chaotic energy unleashed will cause random damage to strike your enemies during combat. Yeah, let's do this. The binder takes a step back, scanning the view of the valley below, filled with the magic of your edict. It actually worked? If not, how? Uh, I mean, did, did Kairos grant you an edict to proclaim? I had a feeling it might work. A feeling? You had a feeling it would work? You shit! He laughs with disbelief and nearly dazed. <laughs> You've grown far too much and too fast. I don't know if I should be proud or terrified. Yet I can't help but feel both in a great measure. This changes everything. Every eye in the tears and the north will be upon you now. But first, you must survive this battle. Go and finish your foes while your edict has them off balance, terrified and running. Act now before they can regain their senses. He claps a heavy hand on your shoulder and bid you well. Now I must stand sentry here, at the ready to take the spire should you fall. If anyone makes it up here, they'll have to get from me. Good luck, my friend. And this is where I'm gonna end this part. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.